question so far this morning, the well-worded prayers, the way we've all engaged in our singing. Appreciate the comments at the table and the generous giving hearts that we've had as we've participated in every act of worship. And now we have an opportunity to open God's Word again this Lord's Day and to consider a portion of it, its meaning and its application to our lives today. I'm going to start in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 this morning. Proverbs chapter 4. want to encourage you to have your Bible out and to have it open and be following along as we study this morning. And I'm hoping that especially I have the attention of those here who are younger. Uh, we are going to talk about some of the pitfalls that lie in the way, uh, in our way as we are going through life. And we're going to take a look at those again and make sure that, that you are setting yourself up for success in life and that you're taking seriously the warnings that we find in Scripture uh, to avoid those pitfalls and to avoid those mistakes that can so easily be made. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 7. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. The book of Proverbs was written by Solomon to his sons to equip them with wisdom to guide them in their lives. And a large part of this wisdom, as you're reading through the book of Proverbs, you notice, especially in the beginning, there's this repeated appeal. Son, listen to my words. Take them seriously. But as you read through, you see that a lot of this wisdom is given in the form of a warning. Warning about the dangers and the pitfalls that await them as they set forth into adulthood. And as parents today, we want the same thing for our children that Solomon wanted for his children. We want them to live the best life that they possibly can here. We want them to draw near unto God, to put God first, and to especially prepare for that life which is to come, eternal life with God in heaven. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as he did most of the book of Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, starting at verse 9 and then going to the first verse of chapter 12, these verses are addressed specifically to those who are younger. Rejoice, O man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure. In them. Why is it important that you remember your Creator in the days of your youth? Why is it important that you give your attention to God then? So that, verse 10 says, you can remove sorrow from your heart. So you can make the decisions now that will help you to avoid those circumstances that would come later that would bring you sorrow in your life. Habits are formed early in our lives. And these habits that we form in our lives have a great impact upon developing our character and charting the course for our entire lives. And so we want to get it right from the start. Many life-defining decisions are made in our youth. 
made in the early days of our life. And I don't know of anyone who purposely plans to ruin their life. We understand that we only get to go through this once. We don't want to ruin it. We don't want it to be hard and to be difficult on purpose, but yet what we see oftentimes are young people who think they know better and they, they close their ears up to warnings and advice and wisdom and they decide that they are going to learn by their own mistakes instead of heeding the advice and the wisdom of older people who love them dearly, like their parents and their grandparents even some of their teachers and their mentors. So what I want to do for a few moments this morning, I want to take a look at what the Bible has to say about the way people can ruin their lives in their youth. I know that's not stated in the positive way. Full disclosure here, I got the main points of this outline from a preacher friend of mine. Preachers do that sometimes. But, but I noticed in his outline, it was all of it was stated in the negative. Here's how you ruin your life. I, I've tried to switch that around and try to look at it in as positive a way as I can. Let's set ourselves up for success. Let's make sure we don't do these things that can ruin our lives. But, but the points are going to be stated in the negative, and, and I hope, and I trust, I know, that you can appreciate the spirit in which they are given. You want to ruin your life. You want to make a mess of your life for the rest of your life. Then here's one thing to do. Believe that life is all about you. Put yourself right in the center of your life. And that's a good way to ruin it. Now we all start out that way. We all start out that way. Human babies are the most helpless of all firstborn offspring. We cry about everything. And you know what? Our parents come running and take care of us. And so we learn very quickly. We cry. We get catered to. You add to that grandparents who love to dote over their grandchildren and make them the center of the universe, and maybe aunts and uncles, and children have to be taught to think of someone other than themselves. Somewhere along the way, there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with, with treating children in that special way, but somewhere along the way, mom and dad need to make sure children are thinking of someone other than themselves. And they realize that the world doesn't really revolve around them. They have to be taught to notice other people, to care about other people, and realize they have a responsibility to other people. If you think about it, that is at the center of what Jesus taught about discipleship. Putting others before yourself. In Mark, a couple of passages in the Gospel of Mark, in Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8 and at verse 34, Mark chapter 8 and at verse 34, when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Notice one of the first steps of following Jesus is denying ourselves, taking ourselves off of that throne, taking the geographical center of our lives off of ourselves and putting it somewhere else. When Jesus teaches about greatness in the kingdom in Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10 verses 43 through 45, Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. The path to greatness in the kingdom is learning to put others before ourselves learning to serve others. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. We need to learn that life is not about serving ourselves. If you are a Christian 
And many of our young people are. Many of our young people here have put on Christ in baptism. That means that you are a servant. That you have given yourself for your master. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Romans chapter 12 and at verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You're to be a living sacrifice given for others, primarily for Christ. Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So life for a Christian is not about serving yourself, it's about serving Christ. If you make life all about you, if you decide that you're going to go through life insisting that everyone cater to you and make it all about you, then you need to know, number one, you're going to make everyone around you miserable. Not everyone is your grandmother and grandfather. Not everyone is going to want to dote on you all the time. You're going to make everyone miserable. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, we often look at these verses going in one particular direction. Look here, Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. If we're doing that, everything is going to be flowing in just the right direction. But what about the one person who decides, no, I'm not going to do that. I am going to live for myself. Look at the problems that they cause. They're standing in the way of of everything flowing in this one direction. No, it's going to be about me. Everyone around them is going to be frustrated. Everyone around them is going to be miserable. If you're that person, it's not going to take long before people are going to decide they're not going to have much to do with you. That means you're going to be left alone to live your life. And you're going to need people in your life. You're going to need that network of friends helping you and supporting you. But if you're living just for yourself, you're going to alienate yourself from all those people. Here's something else. If you make life all about you, you are setting yourself up for a fall. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18 still says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride, making it all about you, you're setting yourself up for a fall. So you want to avoid that. The way you avoid that is by learning to live for others, not for yourself. That's going to that's allow you to set yourself up for success. But let's move on to a second point. You want to ruin your life? Then believe your actions don't have consequences. Believe, hold to that belief that whatever it is you do, whatever it is you say, it really isn't going to have any impact upon your life. There are no consequences there. I want to tell you, you are not made of Teflon. Teflon, what is Teflon? Teflon is that space-age material, that is that polymer that is made in such a way that it reduces friction, and so nothing sticks to it. It's used in things that they build to go up into outer space. It's used in your fillings on your teeth. And it's used especially in skillets and pots and pans. You know the infomercial that you see on TV where they've got this, they're selling you this space age skillet, and first they take a bag full of hard candy still in the wrapper and pour it in there and turn the fire on and cook it and let it all melt and see how it just slides right out of the pan. And then they take a jackhammer and they bust up rocks in that skillet, right? 
They do everything in that skillet, and then they make an omelet and just slides right out. That's Teflon. Nothing sticks to the skillet. Some people live as if nothing sticks to them. That's a lie. Because the things that you do in your life are going to stick with you. You'll bear the consequences of the decisions that you make. Parents are doing their children a tragic disservice when they fail to discipline their children. In Proverbs 19 and at verse 18, in the New King James Version, it says, Chasten your son while there is hope. And do not set your heart on his destruction. What do you mean, while there is hope? While there is time for the child to learn that there are consequences to their actions. Discipline drives that home. Drives home the fact that actions have consequences. Without consequences, without punishment, a child has no deterrent to continued bad behavior. Ecclesiastes 8 and at verse 11, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. There are no consequences. I can do whatever I want to. We're getting more and more like this in our society today, aren't we? Just a slap on the wrist, if anything at all. The more tolerant we become, of criminal behavior, the more uncivilized and unsafe our society becomes. Because there's no deterrent. There's no deterrent, and we've got people who are living as if they can do whatever they want to, and there are no real consequences for their actions. We all live under the force of an eternal principle that is stated so well in Galatians 6 and at verse 7. Do not be deceived. Okay, do not be deceived. That means don't fool yourself into thinking that you're the exception to this rule because this is the rule. God is not mocked. What does that mean? That means you're not going to fool God. God has put this rule into effect and you're not the exception, and you're not going to be able to find a way to work around it and show God, aha, I got away with this. No. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. It's that simple. If we do what is good, we are going to contribute to a kind world, and we're going to benefit from that. But if we do what is bad, we're going to face the consequences for that. And what you need to do as a young person, you need to learn to stop and consider what are the consequences of this decision. If I decide to do this, or if I decide I'm going to react in this way, look down the road and see what are the consequences of that. Proverbs 14, verse 15, in the English Standard Version says, the simple believes everything. But the prudent gives thought to his step. The person who is prudent, the person who is wise, the person who's going to think about things and act wisely, they're going to think about their steps and they're going to look and see where these steps are leading to. And if I'm continuing to do things that are wrong, and I'm continuing to be punished for it, then I need to stop taking steps in that direction. You know, some people do appear like they are Teflon. There are people that appear to get away with anything and everything. We think about entertainers that are held up to us as as people to be celebrated. And and when they do things that are wrong, nothing really happens to them. Or maybe especially politicians. Why, that, that politician is Teflon. Nothing sticks to them. Well, maybe people do get away with things in this life. But we all face God one day. And we're not going to get away with anything there. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Young person, you need to take this to heart. 
your actions, your decisions, your words, they all have consequences. And you need to be willing to own those consequences. You need to be willing to accept accountability. It's sad when we watch television shows, sometimes we, we have these shows on, where, where people are getting pulled over by the police. And, and it, it's not fiction, it's real life. It used to be the show Cops. I don't know if that show's still on anymore or not, but now it's, it, it's, it, it's under some other uh, production, some other title. But, but these are real police officers in real time out there pulling people over and how disappointed it is that the number of times people are pulled over and they act as if you have no right to pull me over. You have no right to question me about what I'm doing. What are you doing putting these handcuffs on me? You've got no right to do this to me. And they really believe that. They really believe that they don't have to give an account of themselves to anyone. Or you hear of some people who are working, and, and sometimes it's younger people, and sometimes it's not so young people that, that are offended with the idea that their boss or their manager would have the audacity to criticize them about their work or question them about what, what do you mean questioning me? I don't have to put up with this. What's the problem? Here, here's the problem. Many times those individuals like that were raised up in a home where they weren't held accountable for their actions. And they're not used to it. Here's the problem. We're never going to be in a position where we don't have to give accountability. Sometimes you hear young people say, I'm tired of living in my parents' house. I can't wait till I move out of my parents' house. Then I can do whatever I want. Well, guess what? You're never going to be able to do what you want. You're never going to be able to do that. Everyone has to answer to somebody. President Joe Biden has to answer to people. The CEO of the largest, most successful company has to answer to people. You're never going to get in a position where you're not accountable to somebody. The sooner you realize that and learn that, the better off you'll be. Here's the problem. If a child is not taught to respect their parents at home, to respect the authority of their parents at home, then when they go to school, they're not going to respect their teachers and they're going to get in trouble at school. And that's not a good life. That's not a fun life. But then eventually, this person that doesn't respect the teachers is going to want to get a job but they're not going to respect their boss, and they're going to get fired. And when they get fired, they're going to go, oh, I'll just get another job. But see, here's the thing. When you go and you, you go to apply for a job here, you list your people, your past employers, and they're going to tell this prospective new employer how disrespectful you were. And you're going to have a hard time getting that other job and that other job. And pretty soon, you hear this, Everybody's out against me. Everybody has it in for me. If everybody has it in for you, are you sure that you're not the one that has the problem? Yeah. So you're going to have a hard time getting a good job and keeping a good job. That's not a good life. And if you don't respect the authority on the workplace, you're not going to respect authority in, in society. You're going to get in trouble with the law. You're going to go to jail. And that's not a good life. And if you don't learn to respect your parents, and your teachers, and your boss, and police officers, you're not going to have any respect for God. But here's the thing about God. God doesn't send you to jail. He sends you to hell for eternity. And who are you going to blame then? You need to learn to be accountable. Ultimately, all of us are going to have to give an account to God. Hebrews 4 and at verse 13, there is no creature hidden from His sight, 
but all things are naked and open to the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. You want to set yourself up for success? Learn to live with a readiness to give account of yourself to superiors. Be ready to do that, always. Let's move on. You want to ruin your life? Then learn to live without self-control. Proverbs 25, verse 28, the English Standard Version says, A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. In ancient times, that would be there's a defenseless city. It is, it's ready to be ransacked at any time. Nobody's going to want to live there. That is a place of ruin. A man without self-control is like a city with broken walls. Living for immediate gratification. That's what this world promotes. I, I saw this phrase and this outline uh, that, that my friend had. I'd never seen it before. Microwave patience and gourmet expectations. You don't make a gourmet meal three minutes in the microwave, do you, Isaac? No. No. You work at it all day long, sometimes even days ahead preparing for it. But, but we, we are conditioned that we want it instantly. We want it now. But that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Easy credit results in a mountain of debt. Proverbs 22 and at verse 7, the English Standard Version says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. The borrower is the slave of the lender. When we decide we're going to go and we're going to buy a bunch of things that we don't have the money for today, well, we'll just put all that on a credit card. We'll just get in debt about that, and we'll just pay, we'll just pay that off. Well, here's the problem. If, if you don't make those payments... They come and they take that stuff away. Then you have nothing. You've got that car and you have to have that car so you can get to your job, but you've not made the payments on that car. The car is gone. How are you going to get to work? That's what happens. You are slave to the lender. We've got to keep that in mind. Recent generations have forgotten that blessings and advancements in life come as the result of hard work. There's a high price to pay for taking shortcuts up the ladder of hard work and success. There's a high price to pay for that. There used to be these things called starter homes. Do they, do they have starter homes anymore? Because I think today, a lot of young people, when they leave mom and dad's house and they get their college degrees, they're ready to move into these three and four hundred thousand dollar homes. That's where they want to start. They want to start right there where their parents worked for 25, 30 years to get to. That's where they want to start. And they want to drive the brand new cars. Have you priced cars lately? Have we gone insane? You're kidding me. It wasn't so long ago. That's what a house cost. And now they're, they're asking that for a car. And the reason they're able to ask that is because people pay it. You've got to be kidding me. No, that, that's, that's the world that we live in. But, but we've got to live within our means. And we've got to learn to practice Self-control. Hardship comes when we decide that we're going to live outside our means. And I want to tell you that one of the greatest self-disciplines that you can develop that's going to help you through your life is to learn how to tell yourself no. Learn how to tell yourself, no, I don't need that now. I can wait on that. That will serve you so well in life. But if you want to ruin your life, Forget about what I said. Go ahead and sign up for all those easy credit cards. You pay it later. So look at one more thing. You want to ruin your life? Prefer and pursue evil influences. Everyone that you know in your life exerts an influence on you. 
everyone. I am, I'm interested in astronomy. I, I don't even consider myself an amateur astronomer because I don't even have any kind of a telescope at all. The phone on my, or the camera on my phone cannot take good pictures of the moon. It just, it just can't. But I remember early on in school when we were studying science as a third or fourth grader, I remember turning in the book and there's, I saw my first picture of Saturn with its rings and I was hooked. I was hooked. I just, I, I just, I enjoy the planets. I enjoy outer space. It was just recently, just recently that I learned that the center of the sun is not the gravitational center of our solar system. I just, I always assumed there's the sun, there's the star, it's enormous. It keeps everything else in orbit around it. So the sun, the center of the sun has to be the geographical center of our solar system, but it's not. It's not. It's very close to it, but it's not the center. And the reason is because all these planets have an influence on the sun, especially the planet Jupiter. They pull and tug a little bit on the sun. So if you were to look, if you were able to look down and see it all going, you'd see that the sun has a wobble to it. Why? Because everything around it has an influence on it. Preacher, what's all that about? Let's bring that back to you. Everything around you has an influence on you and tugs on you in one way or another. Now, a lot of the influences in your life you don't have control over. But the ones that you do have control over, you know you'd better choose the right ones. You'd better choose the right ones. Proverbs 13 verse 20, English Standard Version says, Whoever walks with, wise, with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. If you surround yourself with wise people, they're going to influence you, and the result is you're going to gain a little bit of wisdom. But if you decide you want to run with fools and you want to hang out and spend your time with fools, that's going to have an impact on you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And so you need to make wise choices regarding your friends, your mentors, your entertainment. And when you get on social media, what are these people called that have a lot of followers on social media? They're called influencers, right? Yeah, they got that right. They're influencers. You better pick the right influencers to be listening to and to be following. And while we're talking about social media, we've already gone over, so we've gone over. I'm going to Keep saying some things. When you're on social media, you need to be very careful about what you look at. But here's the great thing about social media is that you get to contribute to it. When we were your age, we just got to turn on the TV. And whatever a handful of television producers decided we were going to get to see, that's what we saw. The evening news, whatever the news producers decided would be the headlines, that's the news that we heard. With social media, you get to contribute to that. And, and that's fun. That's interesting. But you need to be thinking about your influence when you're contributing to social media. And the things that you post and the things that you like and the things that you forward, you need to be thinking about your influence. How are you influencing others? There are many choices that we can make. Many choices that we can make regarding those that we will allow to influence us. We need to make the right choice. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26 in the New King James Version says, The righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. If you prefer and pursue evil influences in your life, you're setting yourself up for a hard life. It's just that simple. Let's wrap this up. 
we want the best for our young people. And young people, listen to me. We love you. And we want the best for you. And we need to give you encouragement. And maybe there are times when we should have been giving you more encouragement than we have. And for that, we're sorry. We'll do the best we can. But sometimes we need to give you warnings. Sometimes we need to give you admonitions. You need to take those seriously. And that's what this sermon, that's what this study has been this morning. It's been a, war a warning. It's been an, an attempt to bring some things to your attention to encourage you to make the right decisions regarding the steps that you're going to take as you develop your character and the course of your life for the rest of your life. We love you. And just like Solomon did with his sons, we want you to walk in wisdom and do those things that are always right before God. If you're with us today and you're not yet a Christian, not yet a child of God, that's where you need to start. And it doesn't matter if you're young, middle-aged, or old. You need to become a Christian now. You need to confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You need to turn your life around. Repent of your sins. And you need to be baptized in water to have those sins washed away. It is there that you will rise from that watery grave of baptism, born again, ready to walk in the newness of life. Maybe you've done that in the past. You realize you've gotten off the charted course and you need to come back. You need to take care of that in a public way. We'd be glad to pray with you. Maybe you're overwhelmed with something in your life. Maybe something like what we've talked about today. Maybe it's something we haven't even talked about today, but you still need our prayers. You're, you're among people who love you, and we'd be glad to pray with you. Whatever your need is, would you let it be made known as we come forward and stand, uh, stand and sing this invitation song?